By the way, another way of putting this is here we could say there's no acceleration. A natural way to describe this is to say there's no acceleration. So a natural way to describe this situation in words would be to say there is an acceleration. If someone says there's an acceleration, <clears throat> or that the object is accelerating, what they mean is that the acceleration is not zero and that the velocity but is changing. But earlier I said that when a equals zero, that means that acceleration is constant. That was Which wrong. was a mistake. So, but you can say when a equals zero, there is no acceleration. That's right. Okay. But those are totally different things. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. So yeah, that's a, um, that's a good point. When, when a equals zero, you can say there's no acceleration, but you can't necessarily say that the acceleration um, is constant. Because there could be just no acceleration for an instant. And maybe the next instant there could be an acceleration. Yeah. So, yeah, so the point is something can be zero without being constant. Zero and constant just are totally different ideas from each other. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so when the acceleration is zero, that tells us that the velocity is constant. And again, the reason people get these wrong is they just don't really understand the concepts and they just kind of take a guess. Um, so, for example, very often people will say, oh, if the acceleration is zero, then the velocity is zero. But that's not true. It's just, that's just a play on words. Just because this is zero doesn't mean that this is zero. Um, when this is zero, this means this is constant. Or people would do it the other way, and they'll say, oh, the velocity is constant, so the acceleration has to be constant. But it just doesn't work that way. Just because we use a word for velocity doesn't mean we use the same word for acceleration. They're two completely different things. Um, so it's really important to, to make some flashcards and uh, see the relationship. And the same deal here. If the acceleration is not zero, that does not mean that the velocity is not zero. It just means that the velocity is changing. And if the velocity is changing, that does not mean that the acceleration is changing. It just means that the acceleration is not zero. So this is what we can say, and we should not say other stuff than that. Other stuff would be wrong. Those are all common mistakes and common traps that instructors often try to trip people up with on exams. Okay. So yeah, I think you have this in your notes, and it's just important to really, uh, you should be able to come up with this little table on your own without having to look at your notes. Um, now, I know that on the test, um, you are going to get uh, a cheat sheet. However, there are some concepts that are going to be so important that we want to have these memorized so that we're internalizing some understanding of the concepts as we go. And I would certainly put this in that category. Okay. Okay. All right, so there's three different possible possibilities now. The acceleration could be parallel to the velocity, anti to parallel to the velocity, or the acceleration could be zero. And those correspond, uh, for one dimensional motion, those correspond to, whoops, speed increasing, speed decreasing, or speed constant. That we might have to modify some of these ideas a little bit for two-dimensional motion, but we're, we're making a good start at understanding uh, the basic concepts here. And we also saw this relationship. And we've seen that the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. Um, for example, this object is not motionless. The acceleration is zero, but that doesn't mean it's not moving. It's just moving with constant speed. Ah, although that does... Uh, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Well, it would be nice if we could uh, start seeing how to use the kinematics equations. So um, let's see if we're ready to uh, get into that. Now, the important thing for kinematics is um, we, we don't want to do these kinematics problems by the seat of our pants. We want to have a systematic approach that's going to work for all these types of problems because um, oftentimes our common sense can kind of lead us astray in physics. Um, so I think at the start, uh, rather than having you do the problem, I just want to demonstrate one or two problems to see what a good systematic way is to do that. Um, so maybe we can do, let's take a look at page 22 in the textbook. Page 22, um, example 2, 3. Okay, um, so why don't you uh, just read through the problem, um, just so you can visualize what's going on here. Think about that for a second, but when you're ready, we'll just go through the problem together. Okay, okay. all right. 
So, like I said, the important thing here is to have a systematic approach. So here's the systematic approach that we're going to be going through. And the easiest way to understand it is just to do the example. So we'll go through these steps one by one. Um, the first step here is to draw the object's path. Well, in one-dimensional motion, the paths are actually very boring. In one-dimensional motion, the paths are just really straight lines, basically. Um, but here I drew a horizontal line, not a vertical line, because we're moving horizontally. Um, but even here, I can label some things about the path. So we might say that the airline, the plane is touching down here, uh, and then this is going to be the end of our railway. Well, that's the initial and final points of the problem. That's, that's an excellent point. Uh, that's actually very important. You should always label your initial and your final points. Well, in this case, we're going to be treating this as the initial point and this as the final point. So that's an excellent issue to bring up. And these are just the initial and final points of the problem. Okay. Now, of course, when we say this is the initial point, we don't mean that it's the beginning of time. It's just the first convenient point to look at in the problem. And we don't mean that the universe is going to end over here. We just mean that we're not interested in what happens after this. So we need to pick an initial and a final point that's appropriate for the problem. Well, it seems like the problem is implying that these are the initial and final points to focus on. OK, so that was step one. Draw the object's path. Oh, so as you saw, we have to label the initial and the final points. Um, maybe I'll put an arrow here to show that we're moving from here to here. OK, and also it's a really good habit to get into to draw the velocity and acceleration vectors. Well, what direction would the velocity vector be in here? To the right. Because we're moving to the right. Very good. Now here's something a little trickier. What direction is the acceleration going to be if everything goes according to plan? To the left, because it's decelerating. That's right. Good. So we need the acceleration to be anti-parallel to the velocity. Now notice, you have, to, it, you have to write the velocity first before you can write the acceleration, because otherwise you won't know what the anti-parallel direction is. Right. So that's how we would go through um, putting those in. OK, good. So that's what it means to put in the uh, velocity and the acceleration vectors. Although, um, there is uh, maybe another little complication um, what's the velocity at this final point? If all goes according to plan, what's going to be the velocity there? Just in common sense terms, what can we say about the velocity at the final point if everything goes according to plan? Zero. That's right. Here you have to use a little bit of common sense. We want, the op we want it to stop um, at or before it gets to the end of the railway. Uh, the runway. Now they want us to, de to determine the minimum possible length of the runway, so we're going to allow the plane to come to a stop at the very end. Um, but it has to have come to a stop here or um, the runway is not serving its purpose. So I know that something equals equal there, equals zero there, right. but what is it that equals zero? Well, what your answer was correct, it's the velocity that's zero. Okay. And Even the reason though they say, oh I'm sorry, okay, that's the acceleration. Okay, I'm yeah. okay. So at this point, yeah, because the object's not moving. Right. Right. Remember, the velocity tells us how, how, the, how the object is moving. Or also remember that the, the magnitude of the velocity tells us our speed. Well, we need to have come down to a speed of zero by the end of the runway, or the runway is not long enough. OK. So actually, this arrow only represents the velocity until we get to here. At the end point, the velocity is going to be zero. So that's why we have, we have to describe the velocity at two different places. Right. OK. And then, so the initial velocity is um, 270 kilometers per hour, right? Excellent. Very good. OK, good. And we might as well build that into the, tape, the picture. So VI is that. Good. Now, um, we have to use consistent units right. so, on this problem. Um, what's the minimum uh, So OK, so the inconsistency is we have kilometers per hour versus meters per second squared. Right. So shouldn't we like convert it to meters per second? Yeah. If you wanted to, you could convert everything into kilometers and hours, but those aren't standard units, so we might as well convert everything into meters and seconds. So that gives us a little chance to practice our unit conversion. Meters per
Sitzen waren. 